1889, right up to it was a draw, and she never carried seven seven eight, although that was to have been its number. You'll sometimes see it referred to as seven seven eight. Seven seven eight, right? It never actually carried the number. Ah. When did the All Indian number start to apply into this? Was it just before uh, it was scrapped? Uh, sold? Sorry, wrong it, word. I think I brought it in about 57, actually. 57, ah, right. This engine was withdrawn in 16, so I don't it applied to it by then. Well, it takes a while to get through a system to renumber and things, doesn't it? 779, which was sort of erected alongside it in Glasgow, is still in service up there. And this is officially a class B class. B. Dodging Himalayan Railway B class. Followed on from the A class. <coughs> which were 1882. And B class for 1889, although the last one wasn't made until 1927. Ah, right. Still about, well, still quite a number of them in it. Well, quite a lot of them in India, a lot of them on plinths in various places. But there's about ten on the railway. In working so order. Yes, yeah, so they're not all working order at any one time. But no, but available to be drawn on and yeah, maintained. And there's usually seven or eight that could be steamed with a day's notice. Yes, I've seen quite a bit of uh, YouTube footage of the different uh, different trains in action. Yeah. Usually when some amateur photographer sees a van or a lorry hit an engine or something like that on a crossing, oh, right, yeah. which is that's a shame. I don't know why car drivers don't realise that engines are heavier than they are. Is it a lube oil or a gear oil that you use? Uh, I think it's the same thing. <laughs> described as locomotive bearing oil. Ah, that's, uh, right, a specific thing. That was one of my very first jobs, working in a garage with lubricants. Oh, was it? Yeah. Sparax, Spirax 90. Oh, well, that works. EP140. Right. Okay, well, in that sense, it, it, it's not an EP oil, it's uh, an engine oil. Oh, um, right. Wouldn't have all the additives that they've had even then, but it's more on the lines of that. In fact, you could perfectly well put that car engine oil in this, it'd be a bit expensive, but uh, it would be it would do the job perfectly well. You, for the Lubrication of the cylinders, which in this locomotive as well, this mechanical lubricator here, you put uh, steam oil, which is one that is doesn't mind being mixed with steam. Massifies a bit. You'd have to have a different grade of oil because this is only for. It'd be higher than that because uh, you're containing the pressure. I don't know quite what it is, Nigel. I'm certain would be able to quote you <laughs> offhand what the temperature would be, but it would be a lot higher than that. What about 120? No, we haven't that. Oh, higher than that, am I? Right. Well, that's Nigel in a minute. I'm certain you'll know the answer instantly. So the superheat then makes it drier rather than yeah. higher pressure? Uh, yes. What happens with, super heat, with a, an engine with a superheater, um, after the steam comes out of the boiler and on this engine and on Nigel's engines go straight to the cylinders. Um, on a superheated engine the steam um, continues in some tubes which are inside of larger diameter fire tubes and go backwards and forwards through the boiler through several passes and, and you're right the whole idea is to, to heat up and dry the steam. 
um, and that is more efficient uh, and all sort of modern express locos sort of built through up in the early years of the last century would be superheated to some degree more efficient use and it, it's, it's, it's less cold per mile yes that, that's right um, however on a messing about sort of shunting engine you wouldn't do it because a superheater takes a bit of time to get going and everything and shunting locomotives would all tend to be saturated steam which is what these are and there you're not really looking at efficiency in a few measures rather interested when I went in the museum at Penryn Castle to yeah. see Fire Queen oh, yeah. and the huge valve gear that's on that and the enormous length of rods. Yeah, well, that's a remo an amazing uh, survivor that engine. It is isn't it? It was bricked up for many years and was discovered in the 60s I think and been bricked up for I don't know how many years.